everyone. Today let's discuss a few things about periodontal ligament from the subject of periodontology. So in this session we are mainly going to discuss about the structure and composition of periodontal ligament. Okay. So let's see. So everybody knows the tooth supporting structures, right? What we call as the periodontium. Mm -hmm. They are basically four components that is we have the gingiva, then we have the cementum, the periodontal ligament and the alveolar bone. These four are actually what comprises our periodontium. So in this session we are going to discuss in detail about this component here. Okay, That is the periodontal ligament. Okay, So now you know that PDL or the periodontal ligament is one among the four tooth supporting structures. right? Okay, So let's get into the details. Periodontal ligament is actually a specialized fibrous connective tissue that is surrounding and attaching the roots of the teeth. Okay, the roots of the teeth to the alveolar bone. Okay, so that is what your periodontal ligament is basically doing. It is attaching the root of the teeth to the alveolar bone. And it's a complex vascular and highly cellular connective tissue. Okay, it's a highly cellular connective tissue that surrounds the tooth root and connecting it to the inner wall of the alveolar bone. In the picture, you would have understood that, right? See, this is the tooth surface, okay? So, here this is your root, okay, where you have the cementum. So, the periodontal ligament is attaching this cementum to the alveolar bone. This is your alveolar bone. So, here, this is your periodontal ligament, right? So, it is attaching the cementum on the root surface to the alveolar bone, okay? So, let's see the structure of the periodontal ligament. The average width of your periodontal ligament is around 0.2 mm, okay, 0.2 mm and the periodontal ligament space or the PDL space is diminished around the teeth which are not in function or in the unerupted tooth and it is increased in teeth that are in hyperfunction. It's easy to remember, right, PDL space will be less in the teeth that are not in function and it will be increased in the teeth that are in hyperfunction. Now coming to the composition of periodontal ligament. Very important. PDL consists of the following. Basically, there are fibers, cells and a ground substance. Okay, that is periodontal ligament fibers are there, cellular elements are there and ground substance are there. Now periodontal fibers are again divided into two types. There are principal fibers and there are secondary fibers. We will get into the details of each of them. Okay, So, just remember that the PDL has three components. Okay, Periodontal fibers, cellular elements and ground substance. So, the first one that we are going to discuss is the periodontal fibers and in periodontal fibers the first is the principal fibers. Okay, The principal fibers, they are the most important elements of the PDL. Okay. They are the most important elements of your periodontal ligament. They are actually collagenous, arranged in bundles. Okay, They are arranged in bundles and they usually have a wavy course. Okay, Please remember they have a wavy course. The principal fiber bundles are actually individual fibers Okay, that forms continuous anastomosing network between your teeth and your bone. And the terminal portions of your principal fibers, something that you have to remember is the terminal portions of your principal fibers that is inserted into the cementum and the bone. Okay, that is what you call as your Sharpies fibers. That is, okay, imagine this is your cementum and this is your alveolar bone. Okay, so you have the periodontal ligament fibers that are connecting between the cementum and the bone. So the terminal portion of this that is here, okay, that is attaching to the cementum and that is attaching to the bone. Okay, These are what are called as your Sharpies fibers. Okay, Let me show you some pictures. Here, this is your alveolar bone. This is your cementum. So, you have the periodontal ligament fibers connecting the two and see these portions are what are called as your Sharpies fibers, the terminal portion of your periodontal ligament fibers that is attaching to the alveolar bone and the cementum. Those are the Sharpies fibers. Again, and in some books, it's also mentioned that the Sharpies fibers are thicker on the alveolar bone side. Okay, this is the bone, this is the cementum, and these are the Sharpies fibers. So, here, see the one that is connecting to the cementum is actually thinner, whereas the ones that are connecting to your bone, the Sharpies fibers on the bone side, are much more thicker. Okay, this is again a histological picture. See the periodontal ligament is here. Okay, and here you can see the Sharpies fibers. Cementum 
and here the bone so here you have the sharpies fibers okay so we said the principal fibers are the most important fiber groups in the periodontal ligament right so let's see how many groups of principal fibers are there there are basically six groups of principal fibers okay six groups are there the first one is the transeptal group then we have the alveolar crest group the horizontal group oblique group a pical group and the interradicular group okay so for you to remember this uh, please remember the mnemonic ordered amazing indigo hat okay ordered amazing indigo hat so o is for your oblique group of fibers a is for your apical fibers i for interradicular and h is for horizontal group of fibers a for alveolar crest fibers and t for your transeptal fibers so remember ordered amazing indigo hat okay so let's see the first group of fibers okay the first one is the transeptal group please learn it in the same order the first one is the transeptal group they are extending interproximally over the alveolar bone crest okay remember this it's over the alveolar bone crest and it is embedded in the cementum of adjacent teeth okay and they are reconstructed even after destruction of alveolar bone due to any periodontal ligament diseases so this can be also considered as belonging to the gingiva because they do not they do not have any osseous attachment okay please note this point they do not have an osseous attachment instead they are embedded in the cementum of adjacent teeth okay let me show you this picture this is transeptal group of fibers see this is the cementum of one teeth and this is the cementum of the other two so where are the transeptal group of fibers they are extending in between the two cementum of the adjacent teeth and it is above the alveolar crest okay this is your alveolar crest this portion here is your alveolar crest and the transeptal group of fibers are passing above it and there is no osseous attachment there is no bony attachment so you can also consider this as a gingival group of fiber moving on to the second one alveolar crest group okay remember the name itself tells you it's extending obliquely from cementum to the alveolar crest the thing that you've note here is crest okay because it's extending the name itself is telling you it's alveolar crest group okay so it's extending from cementum to the alveolar bone but where of the alveolar bone to the crest and this will prevent the extrusion of the tooth and it will also resist your lateral tooth movement so let me show you this picture here remember this is the cementum right and this is your alveolar bone and this is the crest of the alveolar bone so your alveolar crest group of fibers are coming and attaching to the crest of the alveolar bone and remember all the periodontal ligament fibers are attached from the cementum to the alveolar bone okay so you can remember something like cab or something like that okay so it's from cementum to the alveolar bone okay so this was alveolar crest group of fibers now the third group of fibers are your horizontal group of fibers they are extending at right angles to the long axis of the tooth okay right angles to the long axis of the tooth from cementum again to the alveolar bone i told you right it's all from cementum to the alveolar bone and they will prevent lateral tooth movement okay so again the name itself suggests right it's horizontal okay so this is the cementum okay and this is the alveolar bone so your horizontal group of fibers are extending from your cementum to the alveolar bone in a horizontal manner okay so this is at 90 degree right this is at 90 degree to your tooth surface so now moving on to the fourth group of fibers they are your oblique group of fibers so again as the name suggests it's oblique so they're extending from cementum obliquely to the bone in a coronal direction okay again it's from cementum to the bone only okay in a coronal direction and they are the most numerous fibers in the periodontal ligament mm? so therefore they are primarily responsible for absorbing all your chewing forces and are also hence the main support of the tooth because they are the ones that are present in larger numbers and they will resist apically directed masticatory forces so this is a picture of your oblique group of fibers again this is the cementum this is the bone so from cementum to the bone it's going obliquely in a coronal direction okay 
Now moving on to the fifth group of fibers, those are your apical fibers. Okay, so they are also again radiating from cementum in an irregular manner to the bone. Okay, so it's again from cementum to the bone at the apical region of the socket. That is why they are called as the apical group of fibers, right? And they will prevent tooth tipping and also resist forces of luxation. So here, see, it's placed apically. That is why they are called as apical group of fibers. Again, extending from the cementum to the alveolar bone. Now coming to the last group of fibers, those are your inter radicular group. Inter means in between. Radical means a root. So again it's there in the name. They are fanning out from the cementum to the bone again in the furcation of multi-rooted teeth. Okay, that is in between the roots of the teeth. And they will also resist tooth tipping, forces of luxation, rotation, etc. Here, this is your interradicular group of fibers that is seen in between the multi-rooted teeth extending from the cementum to the alveolar bone okay so now let's just quickly brush up the six uh, periodontal ligament fibers or the principal fibers that we studied the first one that we studied was transeptal remember right that it is uh, not having any kind of osseous attachment it is extending from cementum of one tooth to the cementum of the adjacent tooth so that is your transeptal and the second one was your alveolar crest group as the name suggests it's passing from the cementum to the alveolar crest okay so that was the second group then we had the third group of fibers those were your horizontal fibers right horizontal fibers again extending in a horizontal manner from the cementum to the alveolar bone and it is at 90 degrees to the long axis of the tooth this is the long axis right this is the long axis so to the long axis it is perpendicular this horizontal group of fibers are perpendicular then we studied about oblique group of fibers right oblique group of fibers again extending from cementum to the alveolar bone coronally mm? coronal direction and also obliquely extending and then we had apical group of fibers that was present in the apical portion okay and then finally we had this interradicular one so this was six group of pdl fibers transeptal alveolar crest horizontal oblique a pical and your interradicular group of fibers. Okay, so now this is a picture showing all of them combined. Okay, here transeptal is missing, uh, the rest all are there. Okay, again, we have all the principal fibers. Okay, so with that, we are done with the principal fibers. Now coming to the secondary fibers. Okay, so who are the secondary fibers? There are two immature forms of secondary fibers that are found. One is oxitalin and the other one is eluanium. Oxitalin fibers actually run parallel to the root surface in a vertical direction and they bend to attach to the cementum in the cervical third of the root. And these are actually thought to regulate the blood flow. So those are oxitalin fibers and in addition to these fibers we have some small collagen fibers that are running in all directions and they'll form a plexus that is called as the indifferent fiber plexus. So here you can see the oxitalin fibers that are running and here you have the blood vessels so they are thought to regulate the blood flow. So now we have finished all the fibers of periodontal ligament both principal as well as secondary now let's move on to the cellular elements of the periodontal ligament. So there are basically four types of cells, okay, four types of cells. That is your connective tissue cells, your epithelial rest cells, immune system cells and the cells associated with neurovascular elements. So if you want, you can remember something like NICE, okay, N-I-C-E, NICE. So N is for neurovascular elements. I is for your immune system cells, C for connective tissue cells and E for your epithelial rest cells. So just for you to remember them, uh, this is the bone, this is the cementum. So here you have the periodontal ligament and what are the cellular components? We have N, N is for neurovascular elements, right? So we have neurovascular elements, then we had some immune system cells, right? We had some immune system cells, then we had some connective tissue cells and we also had some epithelial rest cells. So these are the cellular elements.
So now let's see a few lines about each of these cells starting with your connective tissue cells. They are your fibroblasts, cementoblasts and your osteoblasts. Okay, all three blast cells and among all these three fibroblasts are the most common cells and they are very important because they synthesize collagen. Okay, they synthesize collagen and they also possess the capacity to phagocytose old collagen fibers. Okay, they will like degrade them by enzyme hydrolysis. Therefore, we can say that collagen turnover appears to be regulated by your fibroblasts. Okay, so your fibroblasts can synthesize collagen as well as degrade the old ones. Okay, so that is your connective tissue cells. Now moving on to the second one that is the epithelial rest of molasses you know right they are the remnants of hers that is your Hertwig's epithelial root sheath most numerous in the apical and cervical areas and they will diminish in number with age okay as you age they will diminish in number either they will degenerate or they will disappear or they will undergo calcification to become cementicles okay then moving on to the third and fourth which is your immune system cells and your neurovascular cells. Immune system cells are your defense cells. Okay, The defense cells of the periodontal ligament are your neutrophils, your lymphocytes, macrophages, mast cells, eosinophils etc. And the neurovascular cells are the similar to the ones that are found in the normal connective tissues. Okay. So now coming to the ground substance. So we have already finished the uh, periodontal ligament fibers as well as we have finished the cellular elements. Now we are moving on to the third and the last part of periodontal ligament that is your ground substance. So the periodontal ligament also contains large proportion of ground substance that is filling the spaces okay, between the fibers and cells. We have already studied the fibers and we have studied the cells. So whatever is that gap that is present in between these two that is your fibers and cells that portion is filled by your ground substance and your ground substance is basically composed of two components you have your glycosaminoglycans and your glycoproteins and they also have some water content majority of it is water content okay around 70 percentage of it is your water content okay so that's it friends hope the topic was understood for all of you now these are the few important questions that was asked from this portion they have asked to describe the structure of periodontal ligament, then the principal fibers of periodontal ligament. I hope that portion was very clear. It's very important. Then also the cells in the periodontal ligament. I've taken my reference from Karanza's Clinical Periodontology. So please get back to your textbooks and have a good read. If you found our video informative, please do not forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel. And you can also follow us at Dental School in Instagram. Thank you.